This is the Value Investor Podcast with Tracy Reinick. All things value, all the time. Welcome back, value investors. So the FDA is apparently on track to approve Johnson & Johnson's one-shot vaccine here in the United States. And combined with Moderna and Pfizer's two-shot vaccines in the U.S., They are looking for the possibility of rolling out up to 400 million doses by July in the United States. So that's more than the population of the U.S., especially as kids cannot get the vaccine because it has not been approved for uh, under 18 or 16 or whatever it is. Uh, So most kids can't get it. But this means that most adults who want to get the vaccine will hopefully, fingers crossed, be able to get it by as soon as this summer. So you know what that means for the U.S. uh, economy that we could see with the reopening uh, quite a quick recovery in a lot of areas and maybe, dare I say it, I guess I'm going to say it, maybe some return to normalcy by the summer, at least in the United States. Um, And that means maybe indoor dining in more locations, sports events that the fans can actually attend in greater numbers. They are starting to allow some fans back into some sporting events now. Amusement parks might reopen at bigger capacity. Movie theaters, also many of those are open already, but maybe those at bigger capacity. The cruise ships might actually get the green light, Uh, maybe not until the second half of the year, but uh, we'll see what happens with them. Uh, Music venues, some of those may start to reopen. If you go to New Orleans, for example, a lot of the live music venues are still closed. The casinos partially reopening, maybe we get even more people into the casinos and maybe casino shows and entertainment start to return and with bigger capacity as well. So there's a lot of things that are developing if we get these vaccines rolled out as it appears we may. And this is all good for the economy because the hardest hit part of the economy now is still hospitality. Uh, So the airlines, the cruise ships, any hotels, the restaurants, Anything having to do with conventions and tourism, all of those areas could maybe, fingers crossed, hopefully start to see the recovery on this reopen trade going into the summer. So for investors, all of us, especially value investors, this brings up the question, should you be buying these travel stocks or these reopen travel stocks? Um, and are any of them still values? So I was going to do the show initially on all of the reopened stocks, but then I feel like that was a little too broad because there are a lot of different er- other areas other than travel that could uh, see big gains as the economy reopens. So I'm going to have to cover those on another show because travel really is the area that's forefront right now. And it's the area we're all thinking about. We're all kind of looking at those stocks if you haven't bought any already. So what does that mean? Um, You know, I've been watching the hotel and resort stocks for pretty many months now because I like to travel and they're a favorite of mine and I don't own any of them. But I've been watching to see, are the insiders buying in any of those? What does it look like with their cash burns? Because the hotels and resorts are still burning cash. So in the summer of 2020, after the initial pandemic hit, most of those stocks were still, let's just call them cheap. They were, they're still burning cash. People were wondering if they were going to make it, if some of these hotel chains weren't going to go under, not necessarily like the Hilton's. But the REITs that underlie those chains that actually own a lot of the hotels and operate the hotels, uh, it was not clear when you were having 20 to 30 percent occupancy or the hotels were completely closed, how they're going to pay their bills and um, what was going to be the outcome in six to 12 months. 
But now here we are six to 12 months later and we kind of know. So most of the hotels in the United States have mostly reopened. There's a smattering of still shut. I've seen a couple of smaller boutique hotels that have remained shut in places like New Orleans where um, you couldn't socially distance as well. And some of the chains, if they owned multiple hotels in New Orleans decided, hey, we're just gonna shut down one or two of these and operate only the other two because they're only at 40 or 50% capacity anyways. And so we save costs by doing that. Um, so, and then some took this time to actually renovate. I've seen some that have, you know, thrown money in because they were going to shut down or have limited capacity anyways. So now is the time to actually do some renovation if they have some cash on hand. So I've seen some of that, but um, mostly the hotels have reopened. Now, obviously, capacity depending on state regulations and what the states are telling them they can do are well below what they were at pre-pandemic. But a lot of those have, uh, a lot of those uh, capacity levels have slowly been on the increase for many of the hotel chains. But I was waiting to see what they would report this earning season because we did have the second outbreak at the end of 2020 into 2021 how many people have decided not to travel, or go anywhere, stay home for the holidays, all of that, and how did it impact all the companies? So we're getting some of those in, and I am gonna talk about some of those. So some of the companies I'm gonna talk about today, some of the REITs and, and other stocks are really just ones I've been following that have been cheap, They've had big gains. Are they still cheap? Should you still be getting in here? Because a lot of them have, uh, you know, had big rallies off of that announcement in November of last year of 2020 that Pfizer's vaccine did work and they were going to roll it out. So once we got that announcement and now we've gotten the announcement of several more vaccines, it's uh, a lot of these have been off to the races and now we're getting this Johnson and Johnson announcement and that's only adding a bigger boost to these stocks. So should you be in these? So one of the companies I like to watch is Playa, Playa Hotels and Resorts, Playa Hotels and Resorts, PLYA. If you've been to Mexico um, in their big tourist cities like Cancun, Playa del Carmen, Puerto Vallarta or Los Cabos, you have probably seen and or stayed at one of their hotels. So they operate 21 resorts in Mexico, in those cities I just named, and in Jamaica and the Dominican Republic. They have a lot of Hiltons and Hyatts and uh, the Panama Jacks and a couple others, but um, they do the all-inclusives. So if you've done the all-inclusive type of thing, you might have stayed in one of their resorts. Now they have not yet reported earnings, so we're still waiting on them. They're reporting on March 1st. So if you're listening to this podcast after March 1st, which is coming shortly because it's now February 24th when I'm recording this, then they have already reported. So the ticker is PLYA. They are a small cap, a little over a billion dollar market cap right now. But uh, Playa, you know, they've been hit hard, but they've their, their resorts are open and operating, and uh, they were burning money as of the third quarter, the last quarter they reported, so I'm gonna be interested in seeing. Now, what are the shares doing? This is the question. I kind of kicked myself for not buying them last year when they were pretty much dirt cheap, even though they were burning cash, but over the last six months, these shares are up 84%. And over the year now, they're up 2.5%. So they have regained all that they lost during the coronavirus sell-off. And so this is where the question begins, has everything already been priced in? They're still probably burning cash and they still will be for quite a number of quarters, most likely. We'll, we'll see what they say, but hasn't all the good news basically already been priced in. But that's the big question we're examining here on this podcast. Okay, so that's Playa Hotels and Resorts. I'm going to still be watching them, but the shares, you know, have more than doubled here 
And um, they're, you know, basically back to pre-pandemic levels, but the earnings and the revenue are not. So I'm a little hesitant and I'm still on the sidelines on that one. The other one I've watched over the course of a couple of years now is Hersha Hospitality Trust, ticker HT. They own 40 hotels and they're mostly high, they call it high quality hotels in urban getaway uh, gateways and resort destinations. Now, I like the idea of the resort destinations. Obviously, that's why I was looking at the playa as well. So they are in New York, D.C., Boston, South Florida, including Miami Beach and Key West, and the West Coast, including Santa Barbara. So all the fun places we all want to go here in 2021, except maybe the major city ones. But the resort destinations, yes. So they did just report earnings fourth quarter earnings and gave us some insight into what 2021 is looking like. So they've refinanced, they've managed to to get some new terms here and they have a new $200 million unsecured notes placement. Now they eliminated the 2021 term loan maturity, that's key because that was coming up here because it is now 2021. So now they can focus on operations during the recovery because they pushed that back a couple of years. They've also sold six hotels for $191 million. Playa actually also just sold one of its hotels, one of the Dreams, the Aventuris one. If you've ever been to that one, they just sold that one, Playa, also to raise some cash. So Hersha doing the same thing. They raised $191 million. These were older and smaller hotels, and they were expected to underperform in the recovery They'll save $20 million, they said, just on future capital expenditures because, as we all know, who travel at hotels, they constantly have to update, remodel, modernize, you know, better Wi-Fi, um, you know, put in that new little cafe or whatever. They're always doing stuff. So in this case, getting rid of these older hotels will save $20 million there. So... In their results, they said that the corporate cash burn actually increased in November, December of last year. And this is what I was just commenting on. That was due to seasonality, because that's a slower time of the year for them in general. And the higher COVID cases kept people away from the hotels, maybe even increased their costs a bit um, for you know COVID prevention, so to speak. So in January, however, they reduced the corporate cash burn, and that was the lowest since the onset of the pandemic. So in April 2020, right after the pandemic hit, everything shut down, their cash burn rate was 10.5 million for that month. It fell month over month throughout that entire period and through the summer to as low as 5.1 million in October. So they cut the cash burn rate in half by October. But then the seasonality happened, the outbreaks uh, turned, got worse, and the cash burn was back up to 7.4 million in November, 6.8 million in December. But then here in January, because uh, people started traveling a bit again, those cases have started to come down, but have really come down here now in February, then the rate reduced to 4.3 million. So that is, as I said earlier, the lowest since the onset of the pandemic. It's going in the right direction. Can they get it down even lower? We'll see. Now they also talked about headcount. Headcount for full employees at their average hotel um, dropped to 21 employees from 60 per hotel pre-pandemic. So you can see why we have such a high unemployment rate still going on right now. So headcount for full-time employees at Hersha is down 65% still. And if you have been looking at hotels yourself, thinking maybe I could travel this summer, where do I wanna go? Let's take a look at some reviews. You might notice if you've been looking on say TripAdvisor as I have been, that a lot of the reviews now are complaining, complaining about dirtiness at the hotel or Um, you know, things being run down, paint chipping, uh, scuff marks, um, old oldness in the rooms, you know, because they aren't renovating. Um, They're one of the ones not renovating during the pandemic or, you know, during this time period. And a lot of that is because they've cut the employees. So yeah, 
like regular maintenance that might have been done is no longer being done. There's less workers in housekeeping. There's just less everywhere. So yeah, you can see it in the comments and kind of wondering what's going to happen after the reopen really starts to pick up steam. They're going to have to hire back some of these people, but some of the companies are saying that some of the cuts may be permanent because they are big cost savings. Another area that a lot of hotels have really saved a lot of money on is in the breakfast. The free breakfast had become a thing before the pandemic, including you know nicely laid out buffets or even the total sit down free breakfast. And now most of the, the hotels are doing the grab and go where it's just a little bit of like a banana or a yogurt, maybe a hot sandwich of some sort, like a croissant type of, you know, egg sandwich in a little bag or a box and you're, you're off, you're on your way that <laughs> you just pick it up at the, at the little station and you're off that that is cheaper one for the food costs. And it's cheaper for the employee costs because now they no longer have anyone making the scrambled eggs in the back. They might possibly only be making like the sandwiches. So instead of having 10 people working the breakfast, maybe they have five. So will that come back? Will customers, travelers demand that free breakfast that they've grown accustomed to like really coming back when things reopen? We don't know. So that's something to watch. But then there was another interesting uh, slide that Hersha included in their investor presentation um, during this last quarterly report here, where they talked about after the Great Recession, what happened with their share price. So shares really got hammered during the Great Recession. No one was traveling then either. Many of you who were traveling then might recall there were some great travel deals during the, the Great Recession and immediately after, like 2009, 2010, even into 2011. So it took a while for the stocks to come back for um, the travel stocks. And in that time period, Hersha stock actually was up 426% during that time period. So what has it done right now? Um, I took a look and so it's up big too, just like Playa. And it's up 92% over the last six months. Over the last year, however, it's still down 17%. So it was around $13 or give or take a little bit around $13 pre-COVID. And now it's trading at eleven seventy two dollars when I'm recording this in February 24th. So it traded as low as two twenty nine. dollars Could have gotten it way down there. And now it's at eleven seventy two. dollars how much more is left in the tank? Well, Hersha believes a lot more. That's why they gave us that little slide, right? With the bigger gains over the course of two years. But this is a different type of recession. This is a government-induced recession that um, you know really impacted global travel because of a pandemic. But that pandemic will ease. And so it's going to be different, different type of recovery for even the travel industry. It should be much faster than what we saw in 2009, 2010. Yeah, I'm sorry to say, because we all did get good deals in 2010. Um, you probably won't get the same thing now. I'm already seeing at a lot of hotels, especially the big resorts, pressure on those prices heading into the summer as people are now booking. So let's turn to that area of travel and whether or not there's some deals there on the booking side, like an Expedia, the online travel agency type of stocks, um, or Travago, some of those. So Expedia, those shares are up six months. They're up 75% over the year. They're up 36%. They are at five-year highs. They did report solid earnings. This is what they said. They said in December, declines were in the high 50s, and then January, declines in the high 40s. So they are seeing some improvement. VROB, Verbo, as it's called, they own that, and they don't break it out separately, but they said it's holding its own, and they think it gained some market share in the last years. Everyone wanted to book you know, the private home or apartment and not so much the hotel room. So... Um, Verbo still doing well as well, but Expedia, these shares have soared here 
how much more is left in the tank? I don't know, but a lot of trips are going to be booked. And the the other company that's seeing that is TripAdvisor. They also did report um, just recently Trip, T-R-I-P is their ticker, Expedia is E-X-P-E. TripAdvisor, last six months, those shares up 127%. Over the year, they're up 76%. They do have a PE now, PE of 83. Earnings are expected to be up 132% here in 2021, expected to make 40 cents versus a loss of $1.24. They're doing some things right, and they are um, pretty diverse. They have their experiences section, they have restaurants, uh, then they have the hotels. They are launching TripAdvisor Plus. It's kind of in the beta rollout right now. It's going to cost $99, but it's going to give you a lot of freebies if you join. Question is how many will join, but this could be another area of strong revenue for them if they can really get you know, a lot of the people who are on TripAdvisor to buy the TripAdvisor Plus plan. Um, so we'll see on that, but I'm kind of excited to see what they do with that. But uh, hotel auction revenue was down 50% year over year in the U.S. and much of in Europe uh, in the last couple months. Experiences is not doing well over in Europe because Europe is mostly shut down. Like, surprise, we, we can't travel over there, but they can't travel anywhere either. So most of their hotels, restaurants, things um, you know, tours, museums shut down right now. So really a lot of these trip planning companies and the experiences, restaurant types of things are second half recovery, most likely summer and fall. So we'll see what happens with a lot of these uh, companies then, but it's all being priced in, right? Market is forward looking. It's already looking at six months from now, and that's why the shares are up big. So Tri uh, Trivago, that's another one I took a look at. That one has done nothing since its IPO a couple of years ago. It's been down, 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 shares you know, sinking. So why not take a look maybe as a trade, not as a long-term own? And these shares are up big too. One year up 56%, um, six months up 153, but they're coming off of a real low level, like you know, a couple dollars. And now they're up over four bucks, I believe. So 2021 sales expected to be up 59%. They made 281 million last year, expected to make 447 million this year. 2022, another gain up 62% to 727 million. I didn't listen in to see what they said about earnings, but 2021 expected to be flat or zero and 2022 only make five cents. So still a little bit of challenge on the earnings side. Um, I did take a look at one of the uh, cruise ships, my favorite Royal Caribbean ticker RCL. One year, they're still down 15.1%, but over the last six months up 54%. I know many of you like buying the cruise, cruise ships. They've managed to get financing. They're still in business. And when it does reopen, which it's looking better, fingers crossed, but still going to take a while to get global reopening. But some regions will see, you know, uh, the start of a recovery, maybe in Asia to begin. And then in the U.S., you might get some river cruises going. You may get some just regional type of cruises in the Caribbean. Um, and some of these cruise ships will begin again. Um, I saw one of the cruise ship CEO on TV giving an interview just recently, and he said it, it's not so much about um, people being scared that they're going to get COVID on the ships, but it's more about what happens if there's a COVID outbreak when they're on it and whether or not that ruins their vacation because they have to isolate in their rooms they can't go into ports, you know, similar things we saw at the outbreaks that happened last uh, last year when the coronavirus, you know, first was breaking out. And so that's something that they're going to have to work on. But 
it's not like there's not flu and other things that go on on the cruise ships every year as well. So um, I don't mind the cruise ship stocks here, even though they've run quite a bit. Um, RCL is that is that one. There's a couple others you can also buy, but um, I'm kind of into the cruises here. And if they pull back a bit, I might be a little more interested. But so where does that leave us? Um, you know, going forward, there's a lot more REITs, hotel REITs you could be looking at. These are just a, the Hearst show is just one of them. They're not paying any kind of dividend right now for obvious reasons. Playa is not a REIT, I don't believe. Um, I'd have to check on that one, but I don't think it is. And uh, th- there's a lot of others. There's ones that own your favorite hotel that you don't even know that there's a REIT that actually owns that one. So look around some of the lesser known names than the big hotel chains like Hilton, which is HLT or Marriott, MAR. Those are hitting new highs right now. And so I feel like a lot of the uh, good news is already priced into the big branded name chains. But some of these REITs, it may not be completely priced in yet, even though they've had a run. So take a look around. It doesn't hurt to poke around or to keep a watch list. Ever since I've kept a watch list on ones like Playa, um, it has not pulled back. (laughs) So um, it hasn't helped me to keep it on the watch list. That means I just have not jumped in to buy it. But that's okay because there's plenty of opportunities if you've missed out on some of these trades. And some of those will be in other areas like energy and infrastructure and other reopenings that we might not even think, oh, that's really going to take off. So don't feel that you need to chase some of these travel type stocks. As I've said, I'm I'm still just watching the, the playa there. And it's doubled, but it's still just on my watch list. So I'm waiting to see what else happens with some of these stocks and how they react as things start to reopen. And as I said, I encourage you to take a look at some of the lesser known REITs that own the hotels and see what's going on with them and what they're seeing with some of their hotels. Because some are seeing, you know, a nice little... Uh, come back here to start 2021. And that's only going to get better as things reopen. Instead of seeing 60% capacity, hopefully by the end of the year, we'll be at 80, 90% capacity. Let's keep our fingers crossed. So uh, there's a lot going on with these reopen trades. And I'm going to be covering them as we go along here over the next uh, couple weeks and months of 2021 because there's always value somewhere and there is value in some of these reopenings. So let me recap the tickers again. Uh, We talked about Playa, that's P-L-Y-A. Hersha Hospitality is H-T. Talked about the online travel agencies, Expedia, E-X-P-E, TripAdvisor, T-R-I-P, Trivago, TRVG. I did not mention booking. They're about to report earnings on February 24th. So I didn't mention them. I do own them in my own personal portfolio. They are the juggernaut of the industry. So um, keep that in mind too when you're looking at some of these. The the winners pre-pandemic are likely to be the winners post-pandemic as well. But booking BKNG is the ticker. And I talked about one of the cruise liners, uh, Royal Caribbean, RCL is the ticker. So be sure to subscribe so you don't miss a single episode. As I said, I'm going to be covering a lot of interesting topics coming up. And I want to cover what Berkshire Hathaway is doing in its portfolio, at least as we know at the end of last year. So be sure to subscribe. Get us on Apple Podcasts. We're on Spotify. We're on Amazon Music a lot of other places, but get us somewhere. And I'll see you again next week with some more value stocks. This material is being provided for informational purposes only, and nothing herein constitutes investment, legal, accounting, or tax advice, or a recommendation to buy, sell, or hold a security. 
Do not act or rely upon the information and advice given in this podcast without seeking the services of competent and professional legal, tax, or accounting counsel. Publication and distribution of this podcast is not intended to create, and the information contained herein does not constitute an attorney-client relationship. No recommendation or advice is being given as to whether any investment or strategy is suitable for a particular investor. It should not be assumed that any investments in securities, companies, sectors, or markets identified and described were or will be profitable. All information is current as of the date herein and is subject to change without notice. Any views or opinions expressed may not reflect those of Zach's investment research as a whole.